Hello, welcome to another episode of Peaked. Uh, welcome, my co-host JP Noto. What's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? How are I'm you, man? So excited for today. Hell yeah! I, you can tell because I called you like a million times, yeah, double checking it. Maybe a few too many times. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Uh, today's guest, uh, very excited guys. Nick from Bayside. Uh, hey, hey, I don't want to ruin your hello. last name, but uh, again, Barian. Oh, okay. It's it's probably way more uh, ethnic, but I'm from Long Island, so. It's one of the. La I tried to get rid of my Long Island accent over the years. Oh yeah, I just. Really it's don't it's have really. That. I mean, I traveled my whole life. Like yeah. I've been touring since I was seventeen. So, the second I heard other accents, I was like, Long Island accent's stupid. Like I got. <laughs> I, I can't fall into this trap. So, yeah. but the one thing that I've carried over, I always just said Ganbarian. It's probably more like Gunbari and it's Persian. Oh okay. So it's probably a little bit more fancy sounding. But I'm yeah. like, yeah, Ganbarian. It wasn't until I was around other like. Mexicans from Mexico yeah. when they said my last name that it was yeah. like oh shit that's, Proper. <laughs> that's yeah yeah, yeah. Hey, you, Jesus Trejo has an amazing story he's a comic he's also uh, Mexican his parents when they came to this country they were like they didn't know how to like spell his name properly so he didn't know the proper spelling of his name until he went to Mexico yeah yeah <laughs> he had that little uh Tilda. Asterisk above or the U. Is it a tilde? No, the U. I'm not sure. It was that? Yeah, yeah. So his name's uh, Jesus Trejo, but in America, on his birth certificate, it's Jesus Trejo. Yeah, yeah. So he's been calling himself the wrong name for like <laughs> years. Well, bro, I didn't know my name was John Paul. Like together, like so. There's a capital P in the middle of my name. Yeah. It's just John capital P one Paul. Word. I didn't know that yeah, until yeah. I was like 16, 17. So on yeah. birth certificate, I was like, what the fuck? My dad definitely smoked weed. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you were talking. So yeah, we were talking before about uh, touring. Mm -hmm. uh, Seventeen touring. That's got to be insane. I, I graduated high school and went on tour two weeks later. That's and wild. That was nineteen ninety eight. And so. it's just been nonstop since. Uh, right? there was a brief period, I would say, from like ninety nine to two thousand four. Okay. Where I still played music, still toured a very little bit, but kind of just worked retail and like my band back on Long Island was slightly part-time and uh and how I actually wound up in my current band Bayside uh was just had a mutual friend introduce me to the singer of Bayside who needed work from when he was off tour and I was like men's store manager of Urban Outfitters on Long Island so I got him a job <laughs> I got him that was big I was like 24 years old like no, running a whole broke. department I was yeah. I was stoked Urban Outfitters um, bro. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It was still like it was just about to turn the corner to not be that cool anymore. Yeah, yeah. I still felt cool working at Urban Outfitters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it was the early 2000s. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got Anthony R. Singer a job, and he was about to go on tour with uh, Fall Out Boy, who uh -huh. was blowing up. But they had one tour where they were still playing like 500 capacity venues, yeah. and Bayside was on the tour. And, there and were, but all those venues were like selling out. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. already sold out. He's those like, yeah, sold, everything's yeah. everything's sold out already. This band's gigantic, but they still have one tour, you know, where yeah. they have to play kind of smaller venues. And uh, he was like, I kind of think my bass player is going to quit. So I know you play music. I had given him my current band's demo yeah. and and yada yada. And he knew my older band um, from Long Island. And uh, I was like, yeah, you know, I'll think about it. They had a record contract that clearly they were going on tour. So I was like, it's funny when I look back at my thought process. I was like, man, I'm 24. I'm getting old. This might be my last chance to be in a band. <laughs> um, so... Uh, so he came back from the tour. He's yeah. like, it was awesome. My bass player and drummer quit. So we're looking for a drummer and bass player. And I just had like this weird moment where I was like, man, I have a good job. But again, this might be my last chance to be in a band. And they seem like they have a good thing going on. So let me just do it. And it was just never looked back after that. Dude, yeah. And it's been you know, an amazing career. It's been very cool to see it's your cool. guys' band do yeah. it for 20 years. I've seen you in concert, like, I think three times, four times. Awesome, awesome. It was uh, the Troubadour and then, I think, House of Blues before they tore it down. Hollywood, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Cool. So it was very, very cool. And you also seem like you have a lot of fun on stage. It's my favorite thing to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it. It seems like, in a weird way, I don't know how to explain this, that is my pure self. Like, I'm having so much fun. That's what I love. But I'm not that way, like in real life. <laughs> I 100% understand. Yeah. I think JP could see that too. Is like because yeah. he, we met at the comedy store. We've been best friends, and he's a big fan of comedy. So mm -hmm. he's gotten to see me, kind of the same thing, right? Yeah, and uh, my favorite part has been just watching. Like you'll do a tag, and then the next day, even it'll be different. Like yeah. you're trying or like working through different things, mm -hmm. and then, like it's like you having fun doing that, and then like on the way home, you'll be like. Did you catch that new thing? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, as an artist, being on stage and being yourself mm -hmm. and like 100% just like, oh, this is where I'm having my most. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But it's weird that it I, to me it doesn't totally translate off. You know, I'm, I feel like I'm very to myself and like yeah, quieter absolutely. when I'm not there. But the second I get up there, I'm like, what the fuck's up? <laughs> absolutely, yeah. It's very interesting to see how like the dynamic changes, yeah. and a lot of artists are that way. Yeah, you know? yeah, definitely. especially big comics. Um, yeah. man, that's this wild. All right, <laughs> let's get into this. Um, so we have some snacks for you. Yeah, if you're interested. Uh, some great chips and some high hops you've already I'll eat this I don't, I don't, is it okay that I crunch into the microphone Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. those yeah. ones are uh, like hot Cheetos they're oh. stellar you're gonna have Meat. to use your um, teeth to open them oh yeah I was, I was like is there a child proofed um wild gotcha yeah so you were from Queens right uh, I'm from Long Island from the band Long originated Island. from Queens, band originated from Queens. Uh, okay. we're I mean we're kind of all over the place like actually our guitar player Jack is from Massachusetts so he the only original member is Anthony and he's from Queens oh okay yeah. Nice. Yeah. How's the, uh, what get, made you get into the coffee stuff? Um, I mean, Chris and I, our drummer, uh, we would always have our bikes on tour and just go look for veggie food and, and coffee every Are day. Are you vegetarian? Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, I don't know, one day we went to, uh, I mean, the real inception of the coffee roasting company was we went to our friend's new tattoo studio in Greensboro, North Carolina. And she's like, come on in, check it out. After I show you around, like, she was just like, let's do a quick little, like, buddy tattoo. You know, like, something that'll take, like, 10 minutes each on you. And we were like, bikes it's and coffee, uh, bike bros. You know, we were coming up with the worst ideas ever. Yeah. And then in my head, I um, thought of the la lag wagon song called Mr. Coffee. And one of the lyrics is legal speed mm -hmm. in there. And I was like, what about legal speed? And Chris is like, did you just come up with that? I'm like, no, it's a lyric from Lagwag. And he's like, I love that. So we got these little legal speed tattoos. And on our ride back to the bus, we were like, we got to open a cafe. That's the best name. Like we were just like brainstorming. And from that point on, I still lived in New York at that time. Um, so that tour ended and we got the ball going. I mean, Chris is such a go-getter and I'm like the chill one <laughs> out of the two of us. Yeah. So he's such a go-getter. I was like, I really think we should do this, yada, yada. And uh, it turned into more starting to roast first. We're yeah. like, we should learn how to roast coffee before we open a cafe. And yeah, absolutely. it just seemed like a good process. Uh, and we Your still diligence. really only roast. Like we, we supply cafes and do online retail and stuff like that. But we're, we don't have a cafe or anything like that. We've done some pop-ups here, here and there. Um, but we were just really into it. And the cool thing about being in a band and just being in our band specifically is like, we've done all the work over the years to where we we toured 10 months out of the year and made no money and had two months off. And now it's the almost exact opposite. We tour total two months out of a year, make a career out of it and have 10 months off, you know? And, and it's just like, what do we do with all this time? And the older we get, it's like, well, we should be a little bit productive, right? Mm -hmm. So. We uh, get to do this. I have two podcasts, you know, like I, I, I do stuff, but I do stuff that I enjoy and don't necessarily have to worry that it has to pay my bills because Bayside yeah. pays my bills. Exactly. So. And that's the good point, I think, to be as to get as an artist where you're like, oh, now I'm just going to do all the fun shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hope I mean, I hope it all makes me money eventually. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, coffee makes a little bit. Podcasting is tough, but I'm just. One of my podcasts is about Star Wars. It's like, I'm going to talk about Star Wars anyway. I might, might as well have a microphone in front of me. Yeah. yeah. And that's also very interesting, your love of Star Wars. It's mm. always funny to see because everyone always has these, like, images of what their, like, favorite bands or, like, <laughs> people are. And then you find out they're huge Star Wars nerds. Yeah. And you're like, what? This it's, is amazing. It's funny because I, I kind of just think it's, like, total brainwashing. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I definitely have – my mother's told me stories, like, yeah, you would just stand in front of TV and watch Star Wars. I'm like, I don't remember that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I have early kid. memories. Yeah, yeah. I oh, have okay. early memories of, and it always had to do with like uh, buying toys and playing with oh, them. Yeah. So, um, love the movies, but to me, it was just about the imagination mm -hmm. and playing with toys and stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, but since before I had memories, apparently I liked it. So I'm like, oh, that sounds like brainwashing to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah. it's just in my brain subconsciously. Brain <laughs> Did you ever, because uh, I remember when, the I think second or third episode came out, mm -hmm. um, which you know I don't know how you feel about the first three, but uh, I've come the, around. my bad. The second three, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my dad took me out of high school, or mm -hmm. not high school, took me, yeah, like took me out, called a sick day, and we stayed and camped out, yeah, yeah, to watch the movie. That's fun, well, yeah, dude, it was absolutely. The I best. went. Uh, the really the only crazy story from those the prequels were 
It's really not crazy. I don't know why I said that, but I went and saw Phantom Menace twice in a row, like bought tickets to two consecutive. <laughs> so coming out of the first one, everyone's like, oh, and I'm like, well, I'm going to see it again. Guys. Another one. <laughs> wait, 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 let's give it a second. I'm going to go and check if Jar 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 another stuff. chance. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go back in. <laughs> Bro, I remember being a kid and being like, I love Jar Jar. And then yeah. the older I got, I was like, oh, man, I, I, I do not like Jar Jar. Yeah, yeah. He was made to sell toys for no, sure. I've come around on all of them, and I do yeah. really appreciate the movies and the animated series, The Clone Wars, made the the prequels a lot better. Oh, absolutely. So I've really gotten into that, and I'm 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 very healthy with my love of Star Wars. If something's not great, I'm like, it's not Do great. Do you have toys and stuff at the house? I have all my old like Kenner like 1980s era yeah, stuff yeah. that is played with and like beat to shit at my parents' house in New York. Okay. I'm like, whatever you do, throw out anything. You're not throwing out these. Uh, I only recently, I would say like. 2015 or so i started to collect new stuff Ooh. and it has this like it, it it's more about looking for it mm -hmm. and that's the like what i remember from being a kid oh, was yeah, like totally. going to toys r us and looking for it so Finding it has it. everything it's even hard it is literally like a treasure hunt now because mm -hmm. there's not a toys r us that's fully stocked all the time that you could just go get whatever you want yeah, it's literally going to like 10 targets and then that little dopamine rush when you finally find the, <laughs> the thing yeah <laughs> it's just like oh that's that's what i wanted and then i buy it and they're like 20 22 dollars now and i'm like well now i have this <laughs> now what <laughs> yeah, yeah. did you uh <laughs> do you tell girls uh before they come yeah, over yeah. Oh, okay yeah, yeah. by the way <laughs> but also it's great now with the way everything is i don't know if you've looked at instagram lately but there's girls who love star wars oh, totally yeah yeah cosplayers star wars i mean yeah. it's 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 definitely to me like uh enough of my personality where it's if they come across an Instagram account or something and they're interested, there's no way they don't know that I don't like Star Wars. Of course. Toy collecting, maybe they don't know, but I mean, whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. very healthy. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's becoming way more normalized too. Yeah, yeah Like yeah. especially in the last like year or two, everyone's mm -hmm. looking for shit to do. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah. Bro. Yeah. yeah, there's a girl dressed up as R two D two. It's like that is my wife. Mm -hmm. Well, dude, my when well, my uh, I was like in middle school, I think my mom finally made my dad get rid of like his collection of stuff because <gasps> yeah. he had like our garage was full of boxes yeah, yeah, of like yeah. still in box toys, mm -hmm. yeah. and like he even had like the Darth Vader head that you opened it up and you could put all the figures in, yeah, yeah. and it was full like every figure was in there. It was like so like like got rid of like all this stuff for like two three dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. it was probably you know this fucking like. Did you ever hear the Nicholas Cage dollars? story? Mm -mm. So Nick Cage was a huge collector. Apparently, he had like some of the first issues of like a lot of the most famous comics, oh, comics so like okay. batman like first appearance of like spider-man like all these different things and um his ex-wife burned them all oh, God. because they got into like a big fight and then he had to like sell them off because oh, he was God. like he didn't want to get have anything else ruined yeah that's fucking crazy oh. i know it's so ah that hurts my soul yeah. i'm Dude. burning my wife down after that <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> You uh, want to get in the first question? Round one. Oh uh, yeah, uh, the first round we actually smoked some uh, some of the grapefruit. Uh, I really dig that one. It's actually kind of uh, it's a Jack Herrera cross, mm -hmm. uh, so it really has a lot of that kind of sweet citrus and peppery notes to it. Um, but it's crossed. It's Cindy Nine and Nine crossed with an unknown land race. Um, and it, normally it's like an African land race or like something like a Durban Poison or like a Red Congo. Uh, for me, it tastes a lot like a Red Congo. It has a really kind of funky, almost ammonia taste off rip, and then it becomes citrus orange. Like it's very weird. And then you have this like, you ever like drink the juice out of like the clementine cups, like your mm -hmm. juice, cu like the cups as a kid, that flavor sticks in your mouth. Oh, so yeah. it's like weird and funky and almost putrid off rip. And then it becomes like very oh, sweet, sweet, like candy, candy orange. And then that, that orange sits around in your mouth. It's wonderful. And that land race in there and the jack definitely makes it like very steely. You'll feel your eyes peel open. You'll feel kind of that instant euphoria kind of kick in. Uh, and for me, it made me a little anxious off rip. Hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm very sensitive to, to uh, uh, sativas. So you're new into smoking weed. You say yeah, you usually yeah. do edibles and joints, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, pens you like? Pens I like. It's It's been a... Starting to work backwards from using it to yeah. help me sleep at night, yeah. and now I'm just like, let me get out in the world and be a little hey, high a little bit. You've never dabbed or anything before? No, 
Oh, okay, cool, cool. That's why I'm like, I don't know if this should be my first time. No, no, absolutely. <laughs> I feel you. I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can yeah. definitely be a lot, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. But also, it's like, for me, I feel like it's like the closest thing to like smoking flour, mm-hmm. like kicked up a notch. Yeah, right? yeah. I can still get the full spectrum of, mm-hmm. of the terpenes from the plant yeah, yeah. Uh, and really just get that I'm full open effect. to it, but you, didn't even, you do need me to speak for the next yeah. hour or so, right? So, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's actually my favorite part, which is quiet as shit. Um, yeah, this is all solventless, so there's like no added chemicals, no nothing. It's all heat, water, and pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, first question. Who shot first? Who shot first? Oh man! Didn't they acknowledge it? Yeah. What was the so? What was the big drama over? It was it was that there was like hardcore Star Wars fans that were like yeah. Han would never. Yeah. And there was people who were just like. He I mean, I think it would. also come down to just like the editing. Like people yeah. couldn't like tell. I don't. It's like yeah. I don't know. It's That's probably good. Han. Like yeah. it's, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know shit about Greedo. Like I don't know. Like I, Han, he's like a, a scumbag. You know, imagine, he's gonna shoot first. You imagine just the one editor who was just like, I fucked up. Yeah. yeah this, I ruined everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, I'm so sorry, George. <laughs> That was, uh, my cousin's a big Star Wars fan. I remember when that happened, there was like, there'd be full on arguments at my high school between <laughs> like kids about who shot first. Yeah. That was when my dad instilled me first. He was like, just like, as I was getting up, he's like, and Han shot first. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it was his a life lesson. confirm. His father was a diehard uh, Star Wars fan. I mean, awesome. My dad's a middle school history teacher and Star Wars Lord of the Rings yeah. nerd. Like, That's he's great. got like, uh, like tattoos of like, uh, architecture and like roman coliseum all this stuff like beautiful stuff and like with a like a spartan warrior yeah. and he wants it mirrored on this side with like uh luke holding the yeah. lightsaber <laughs> and yeah. like aragorn like all this stuff it's gonna be rad that's gonna be great it definitely yeah. comments uh these are nerd on most of his facebook posts oh my God. <laughs> yeah, i think it's very fun having a, a parent that's got like some kind of nerdism mm-hmm. oh he's the coolest yeah yeah and you know, i give him so much shit but it's like that's yeah. what i learned that's what i learned from you mm-hmm. know what i mean yeah the reason I do play so many fucking video games because of him. My dad loves uh, three things. He loves the Dodgers. He loves the Lakers, and he also lo- he used to love the San Jose Sharks. Now he loves the Angels. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're also a big hockey fan too, right? Big hockey guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I went to the Kings game last night. I'm a Rangers fan. They oh, were yeah, just yeah. getting blown out on the way here by the the Hurricanes, which mm. I kind of knew was going to happen. Mm. Like they're both good teams. They both have good records. But I was like, I'm pretty sure the Hurricanes are like really good. Yeah. Rangers are like pretending to be good right now. <laughs> so it was like 5 1 when I pulled up. I'm like, I don't need to listen to this anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've, had const- <laughs> yeah, I've had constant heartbreak my whole life as a San yeah. Jose Sharks fan. Oh, totally. I mean, at least yeah. we make it to the playoffs. I mean, yeah, that's the, every year. <laughs> and then we never close. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nick, what do you think the weirdest thing you've ever traded for a meal was? <sighs> traded for a meal? I mean, does music count? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't I can't think of anything. Nothing uh popped off the top of my head there, but I mean, I do sometimes. Especially early on was like we weren't making money, but I was like at least we got food today. <laughs> yeah, I as a yeah, I I I god, I feel that so much. As a young comic when you're like traveling, mm-hmm. cuz like when you're like when you open up for a big headliner, you only make like maybe 150 totally, maybe yeah. 200 for the weekend and then but you get like free food so mm-hmm. the smart way would be like you go there you wrap up the you eat the first show and then you wrap up the food on the second show and yeah, you take yeah. it to the hotel <laughs> and then that's your breakfast for tomorrow it's just funny some places early on in our career would be like you know built into your contract is like a catering budget like yeah. how much they had to spend and you'd get there and you'd whatever say the catering budget was like 200 300 bucks or whatever and it's like the worst salad that you know cost five dollars literally the worst spaghetti with sauce that you know cost five dollars i'm like so where'd the other 250 dollars go dude I'm like you're keeping that because yeah. this is not 300 dollars worth of spaghetti that's that would be a lot of spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it tastes better, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those early days, it's like, do you look fondly on those uh, and, like, appreciate the struggles? It's one of those weird things. It's like, I didn't know those were the golden days, you know? Yeah. Like, I had no idea that those were the... It's it, 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 The idea of, like, needing to work um, to get more notoriety and success is, like you can't just be good at music or people like your band. It's like, there's like a, there's <laughs> like a whole work ethic to it post Napster, basically, Absolutely. you know? So it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's very, it's so funny to hear you say these things. It yeah. Very much mirrors comedy. Oh, totally. It's like, yeah. There's a lot of comics too, that like pop super hard, mm-hmm. but are just good at like marketing. And yeah, such. yeah. That may not just be good at the art form. Mm-hmm. 
And there's so many comics that like no one will ever know yeah. who are like hilarious. I know. Yeah. That's I mean, that's a huge thing with music too now is that it's becoming so much easier for people to record their own music and write songs, which just makes the landscape so saturated with people. Mm -hmm. And I'm still huge into finding new music. Like of it's course. a huge passion of mine. Um and I legitimately once a week find a band that I'm like, this is incredible. When did this record come out? And it's like two years old. And I'm like, how didn't I come across the shit? And yeah. it's it's just things like that frustrate me. Like I just found out of a band called Deep Sea Diver and I'm like, this is one of the best songs I ever heard. And the record came out in 2020. I'm like, how haven't I heard this yet? Like I'm actively searching for music. How haven't I come across this? It's because there's too much. There's yeah. just too much music out there. Do you still like going to live shows? Mm -hmm. oh, Love okay. it, yeah. That's awesome. When I got home from tour was like kind of the end of the first wave of t of shows coming back. Mm -hmm. Like we, our tour um, went from like late August to early October. We were pretty early on in like tours coming back. Um, so when I got home, I was doing like three or four shows a week, which is a lot. That's yeah. at my age, it's a lot. I was feeling it. I was like, I'm still sore. My feet are still sore from the last show I went to. I, but I just love it so much. So yeah. I, I just keep going. Nice. The uh, exhaustion you feel like when you're done with a show off, like mm -hmm. at the end of the night, mm -hmm. like what is that? Because you guys play for like what, two, three hours? No, two? no, like 90 minutes. 90 minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh no, the full shows, like, yeah, with all the other bands. Yeah, like, yeah. Two hours. Nah, bands like The Killers will play for three hours or, you know, <laughs> two hours, two and a half hours, Green Day, like those yeah. bands. And I'm like, is that too long? I don't know. Everyone's having a good time. Well, yeah. I mean, how does that feel? Like, are you super exhausted the day afterwards? Um, I mean, it's it's kind of like, working out a little bit yeah. like where you just get maybe the first couple of days you feel like shit and then you get into it and and it's such a it, it's what we do and like i mean that in a sense of like every ache everything is just like this is our work for yeah. two months this year you know like that's it like it doesn't matter unless i'm like actually physically hurt like i'm not gonna whether i'm tired or uh i don't know just or have overall general like soreness or whatever i'm just like it's 90 minutes and everyone out there is having fun and i just always in my head i'm like people work their asses off and part of their like salary they spent at a bayside show I'm like i'm not gonna go out there and be like oh, i'm tired tonight you know it's like Fuck oh you, you know it's like nah people pay money to see us and like we mean a lot to people so it's like i'm gonna go out there and have fun and it is, I mean, not every band is this way, but our career is definitely like a two-way street. Like, the more fun our crowd has, the more fun we have, and the show gets better. Like, yeah. that's that's just something that um, has happened over time. Like, we've always had to, the, the weird um, with our career, like, the, the kind of unexpected awesome thing that has happened is, like, we've always needed to get better. We never like had a big hit out of nowhere or like overnight success or anything like that. Like we always had like the carrot dangling in front of us where we're like, we're we're writing better songs, we're becoming better musicians, and our shows are getting a little better. And we did that for fifteen years yeah. before we were like, I think we're like not like we're good, like let's hold on. But I'm like, I think we're like we're good. We're doing like a thousand, fifteen hundred people a night. Like this is sick. You know, there's bands on the radio that don't do this. Like we did things right and very organically and uh and then, you know, I would say since like 2015 or so, we've been pretty consistent. Um, the tour we just did was like the biggest tour we've ever done. I think it's because, like I said, it was early on and like shows coming back after the pandemic. Um, plus, it was our 21st anniversary. So we had a good bill and uh, there was just a general excitement. So it was great. It was, it was really just some of the best shows we've ever played, which was so good after... We didn't play for two years. It's yeah. the longest we've ever not toured. Was that like getting back into it? How did that feel? Um, oddly, totally fine. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. I had no, no. Uh, we only played one. We did one live stream during the, when everything was like touring was done, uh, and that was actually February. I think it was just February. It was like a year ago. Basically, we did one live stream, so that felt a little shaky to us. And then I watched the live stream, like, yeah, it sounds fine. Yeah. You know, like, I don't think it's, like, our best work, but it sounds fine. It sounded way worse while we were playing. I was like, girl. Oh. <laughs> that, that feeling of being like, yeah. Ah, yeah. 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 You get that hotness on the back of your neck. Yeah, totally. But, yeah. I mean, 
we we put out a record in 2019 um and our fans really loved it and we Colts, right? Yeah, uh in Tarabang. Oh, it was in called. Yeah, yeah, sorry. 2019. Um so the um most of our set is like stuff we've played a thousand times. So it is just in us, you know? So like once we play, we're like, ah, we know that one. That yeah. one's good, you know? And then the newer stuff is the stuff that we've played uh, way less because uh, we only did one tour on that record in uh, late 2019 and then everything went down. So there was a bunch of songs we wanted to play that we had really only played in the studio. Um, so those songs, I mean, they sound great, but they're just like not, I, mean, I have to concentrate a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I think I know what this next part is. Okay. Yeah, cool. And now other songs we played for 15 years, I'm just like, yeah, got Kill it. it. No problem. <laughs> so when you say you'd only tour for like two months usually, how many spots, like how many nights do you um, hit in two months? We're probably in like the 30, like a normal tour for us is probably about 30 shows and we'll probably do that roughly twice a year it's so like almost every other day yeah yeah show. pretty much do you like yeah. it when it's like night after night after night or do you like it with the breaks in between i think the proper amount of days off is one day a week um and i think in general things have become a little bit more like i don't know if like there's been analytics behind this or just like the way of the world right now but like mondays are terrible for shows and sometimes we'll have thursdays off too mm -hmm. so it's like those two shows might just be like weird days of the week for people to go to shows yeah. not that we couldn't it, that it wouldn't be fine but if we're gonna schedule days off before you know while our booking agent is doing the routing he's like mondays are generally yeah, suck, you know yeah. especially if like where it, we would have to play because of the routing is like not a major city like it's gonna extra suck that yeah. day <laughs> you like hickory north carolina yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't think you want to play there on a monday <laughs> yeah oh man it's so so wild to see yeah the similarities between comedy and like mm -hmm. the music and the and the traveling and stuff yeah it's like the big guys they do like they'll do arenas and they'll have like two days off and they'll do like theater 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 yeah yeah that's very very john it's entertaining <laughs> to me uh, you yeah. were talking about uh getting stoned it was uh, it was before we got on camera but yeah, you were yeah. talking about uh a story of when you got two stoned on stage mm. so it was two, 2009 warp tour and at that yeah. point <laughs> i at, was 19. No. <laughs> at that point in my life uh still loved uh, lived on long island and uh the only the very small handful of times that i've ever i still hadn't smoked anything at that point in my life uh was just doing like homemade edibles that someone else made, yep. you know? So Wild West. <laughs> Moonshine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the Wild West, plus I had no control over myself then mm -hmm. with that. I had no idea what to, how I was going to feel or whatever. So I had some instances where I was just like at my friend's house, like face down on the floor, like, how do I lay down more? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like legitimate, like, yeah, yeah. I cannot rest enough. I'm so sleepy and like, you know, there's full body awesomeness. But uh, I started to get more adventurous a little bit. So we had Warped Horribly Weird because you'll randomly have like two days off in a row somewhere. So we were in the Pacific Northwest. We were in outside Portland, I want to say. And we had like a Monday, Tuesday off. So... At that point, I'm like, yeah, well, I've done edibles before. Let's let's do this, like whatever. So, we had a friend uh, hook us up with someone in Portland who basically dropped off a Tupperware this big, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I hooked you guys up. There's like an ounce in every brownie. I'm even like oh my, my even God. Jack, our guitar player, who's more of the experienced drug guy. Is like, dude, he's like, dude, we give you like $200. There's not an ounce in every brownie, you know? Like, we bar barely paid for these. But yeah. the story was, so we went to, since we had off, usually on tour, you'll watch a movie or something. And this was 2009. District 9 had just come out. Fuck yeah. Neil <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blom, Blomkamp. I don't, I don't remember his he last name. He was supposed name. to do the Halo movie. Yeah. Well... He was supposed to do the Halo movie, and that actually leads into why some of this, the gear in District 9 looks like that, because it is, like, stuff that they didn't use because the Halo movie, I guess, mm -hmm. didn't wow. happen, Yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so a lot of the, the guns and stuff like that are weird, like Halo. Halo S guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so we all go to the mall food court, the movie theaters in the mall, and I'll eat these brownies, and we're like, all right, let's go in. So I feel like I bought a treat or whatever. We go sit down, we're watching the the coming attractions and 
15 minutes go by before the movie even starts like the coming attractions are still on and we all start to be like yo what the fuck like <laughs> <laughs> we just ate like then nothing hits in 15 minutes we're all just like what the fuck is going on? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> so, Danger is coming. Yeah, yeah. So I only, I equated almost to the way I was feeling already 15 minutes after eating it to, I had more experience being drunk and I'm like, I gotta get a water, you know? Like I gotta, so yeah. I go to concessions, get a water, go to the bathroom because I'm just like, I, I don't know what's going on and let me just pee real quick. I open the door to go back into the theater and it looks like the Greek. I'm just, it's just like a thousand rows. <laughs> and I'm just like, I don't know where they are. I'm just like so high that I'm just like, like, I don't know. Somehow I sat right down next to our buddy Jack, who I said definitely has more experience with it. So there we are watching District 9. It's high or not, it's one of the most unique, weird movies of all time. Absolutely. And I'm watching it higher than I've ever been by a million. <laughs> and I'm just like, who are these people? Like, these aren't even actors, you know? Like, I remember my weird thoughts. And I'm like, this looks so real. Like, all of this stuff. <laughs> I'm just like, but, like, the, the highness kept accelerating to the point of, like, I was physically, I remember this, physically tweaking by the, when the lights came up by the end of the movie. I was just, like, actually tweaking out could barely walk back to the bus, made it back to the bus. Funny thing, I can't confirm this at all. The couple of people I was with, also clearly high, they were like, dude, there's Samuel L. Jackson. He's right there. And I'm just like, I don't know, whatever. To this day, everyone's like, we definitely saw Samuel L. Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> like, no one can confirm that Oregon. at all. <laughs> I don't know that Samuel L. Jackson is just standing on a corner in Portland somewhere. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. But... Uh, I legitimately, legitimately slept for two days straight. Like, I got up, I remember once, to, like, eat McDonald's or something. I was out. So that was Monday afternoon. I was completely out until we had shows again starting Wednesday. So I played still high. This is why, like, maybe there was an ounce in each one. I don't know. I was still high Wednesday. I was still high Thursday. Friday, I my was the last time my poop smelled like weed. I played that show high, and then Saturday I was fine. So, I, like, it's, I don't know. Terrible. I haven't heard experiences like that where, like, legitimately was still in my system five days oh, later. Yeah. So, I don't know. It, those, those homemade yeah. edibles are so... My friend, yeah. same thing. Hit her for, like, two days. That's, like, the worst feeling is waking up yeah. absolutely fucking... Yeah, yeah. Worse. And I had no experience. I was just like, uh, I don't know. I can't do anything. Uh. It's almost like, at that point, it's like a psychedelic trip where your body's, yeah. like, literally just like, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you, like, feel it in your spine. Yeah, yeah. You're getting, like, pulled through the back of the chair. Yeah. Yeah, Ugh. it's a trip. So it was... Uh, had a couple it was interesting. Those. And then the funny thing is, is, like, I don't know, whenever District 9 came out on DVD, I was like, let me watch this movie. And Give it another shot. And I was like, this movie's weird. It's, yeah. it's still weird, even though I'm not high. Also, to being high and watching a guy turn into an alien yeah yeah and, and it's also, just so yeah, well done and i was nailed out and shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i recently watched it uh and i was like this this movie does not get enough credit like it is so well done and i don't know what he did afterward oh no he did um elysium or something he did elysium which i loved yeah and oh he also chappy chappy yeah, yeah. which was awesome really i love chappy yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i am a sucker for anything with a robot yeah right human. yeah <laughs> um, and <Deantwood. laughs> yeah yeah yeah, Diane would. Yeah. Diane would, my bad. Round two. Uh, so this round, we'll be smoking on some uh, grapes and cream. It's a classic. We've had it a few times. Uh, it's a grape pie and cookies and cream. Uh, for me, it's all the grape pie in this one. It's like sweet white grape flavored, almost very candied like uh, the last one. Uh, and then after you kind of exhale, you'll definitely get more of that, that white grape. <laughs> The, the um, cookies in that really just kind of adds like a creaminess and like a thickness to the smoke. It's kind of like a, more of a mouthfeel than anything, I would say, because that grape pie is just so dominant. Ooh, these sets are going to be nice. I can tell. <laughs> um, oh, is there anyone you met? You know, I mean, we all get like very mm -hmm. starstruck. Uh, is there anyone like you met? Doesn't have to be like musician. Just anyone yeah. who were like, holy shit. I'm so, that's like so not a part of my personality to be that way. That's such a benefit so, to have. Yeah. Like I've met my, my favorite band ever is Bad Religion. And oh, we've done sick. two uh, warp tours with them. So with some of the band we got a little like chummy with and that was cool but i mean the singer about religion's literally a doctor and a college professor yeah. and like the smartest person on earth so i had one shot one warp tour 
where I was like, I already said, I already told everyone else in the band that they're like my favorite band ever. And I wasn't weird about it. I was just like, you mean a lot to me. Cool. Later. You know, like, like that type of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but it was cool. It was a trip to see like Brian Baker and Jay Bentley, like watching us one day on the yeah. side of the stage. I'm, and they're like being like, you guys are pretty cool. You know, like that type of thing. But, yeah. Um, so I had one shot ever because the singer doesn't really travel with the band. And um, like I just said, he's the smartest person on earth. So I'm like, what the fuck am I going to say to him? That yeah. and he hasn't heard a million times. Plus, I'm he I must sound like a Neanderthal compared to him, you know? So I was just like, hey, just so you know, like more so than any other like adult figure in my life, parents, uh, teachers, anything like I've learned the most about life from your music and and you mean the world to me. And he was, when I told him that he was like getting his luggage out of the, the bottom of the, the tour bus <laughs> and warp tour tour buses are like stacked on each other, you know, like they're just yeah. le like, so he was like, so how does it, his answer, his response to that was, so how does it feel to see like your biggest, like positive influence in your life going through their underwear in this puddle of piss right here? And I'm like, I do the same thing. All right. See you later. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like he made a funny joke, yeah, like yeah. wasn't like disinterested, of but course. clearly like, I'm, I'm busy. Getting my lunch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, you know, I didn't tell him I was in a band on the show. Yeah, like yeah. I was just, I mean, maybe I did. I don't know. But I just literally could have been, I was like, I do the same exact thing, buddy. You're like, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> so fucking funny. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I've, I got to meet, you know, Kiefer Sutherland. Uh -huh. I don't know. Do you play video games? Are you a big video game? Mm. Fan? Not really. Biggest regret in my life is that PlayStation Two is when I checked out because I thought I was wasting time. Oh, that's it's hilarious. When, well, it's when it as a guy who up, plays man. a lot of video games, you are wasting time. No, <laughs> but it's like in a in a sense of like what I wish I had in my repertoire right now was like a Twitch channel yeah. crushing it. You know, yeah. I'm like you I have so much that. time. Still, I know yeah. I don't have For to be sure. good, but yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, so you know. Keith Southern, great actor. Mm -hmm. He also randomly voiced uh, Metal Gear Solid Five. You saw its name. <laughs> okay. It was like the big thing they switch over. And I, I actually really love the series, and I actually loved all the work he did on it. He came to the store and was like walking around. Yeah, it was ridiculous because Sutherland like just pulls up and he's got like two chicks on his arm, just classic Kiefer. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, everyone's like, you know, talking to him, talking about all these movies and stuff. And like as he's leaving, I was like, hey man. I loved you in Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. And he like stopped and was like, huh. Yeah. All right. It is one of cool, those man. things where in in like in my mind, I'm like, there's probably like five people I would get a little nervous to say something to. And I'm like, what would be like the random thing to like that would make them be like, oh, this guy's cool. You know, like what would be the one thing that most I think people that's don't the, what like? what everyone fumbles on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, no, I'm different. Everyone yeah, yeah. like thinks they know the thing and then they try it and then yeah. it's like, ah. Just yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I've seen people like just, I, my wife, when she first met Joe Rogan, mm -hmm. uh, she was like, she's a big fan. She's a, got her master's in psychology. Yeah. So like she likes when he talks about like psychology stuff and uh, she like met him and she like just, she was like, hi, my name's, uh, you know, she was like, my name's Hannah. I have a master's psychology. He was like, cool. And then like, that's all she yeah. could get out. And then I was like, all right. I had to like pick her up and was like, okay, we're going to go <laughs> yeah, outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like, I, I froze. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, I, I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh. So what was the weirdest thing anyone's ever come up to you and said? Like trying to connect. Yeah. Hey, you want to come on a podcast? No. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. What was Frank's text? <laughs> 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 what the weirdest thing? I mean, I, I really when we were coming up is when we had the more weird fans really? you know oh, yeah that yeah sense. um that's that's really and funny. people do feel like uh, in general people who don't realize that we're not just four normal people you know which we are four normal people um people look at us sometimes i'm like you know we're not uh, the killers you know like that's yeah. always my i'm like you know, like you're literally i could see you shaking you know and it's like i don't know that anyone's like offered us anything besides like you could come stay at our place you know like that's like that happens all that the type time of thing and even to this day it doesn't happen as much but people like if you need a place to stay i'm like yo this isn't 20 years ago yeah. you know like <laughs> we're good Have yeah ever said yes? that bus <laughs> is where i sleep you know like <laughs> i don't need somewhere um which they're just trying to be nice of but course. i don't know like we have been such a, 
I don't want like a peculiar our band is only our band like I don't yeah. know anyone who's been like done the same thing gone the same route that we've done and and it's great it made us a unique in a way but like we really have never been and this makes this hard to this day to talk to women when I'm dating because they think that like it's just like you're in a band you do whatever you want right chicks man I'm like yo I'm not in Motley Crue in 1980 you know? <laughs> like, like or whatever 88 yeah, yeah, yeah. you know I'm like I literally am a normal person who gets to play I'm music vegetarian. for a living. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. Do that in Motley Crue. I'm going on tour barely dry. I drink more when I'm not on tour. Like That's... I don't know. So uh, it's just a bizarre atmosphere that we've created to the point of like I guess my point is we haven't gotten like crazy things necessarily that happened to us. You know, there's some weird stories that I wasn't even involved in where like I'll put it this way. This didn't happen to me, but someone offered us in like 2007, somewhere I want to say in Ohio, someone was like, I got the keys to the water park that I work at, you know? So a bunch of people went to a closed yeah. water park. <laughs> you know, I didn't go. I didn't go for whatever reason. But like that stuff doesn't really happen that often, yeah. you know, but that's that's one of the crazier ones. I'm just like, that's yeah, cool. That's that's pretty cool. Pretty yeah, exactly. I, I don't remember why I didn't go, but. I uh, probably just didn't want to get arrested. Yeah, yeah. like not good. <laughs> yeah, uh, the yeah. This is why you don't say no to people when they're like, "Hey, do you want to come back to my place?" Because I did. Yeah. So I was in like, ugh, fuck, like South Dakota or some shit, opening for Pauly Shore, mm -hmm. and um, you know, the show ends. Pauly goes a back. Pauly Shore show. story. Oh my god! Oh my god! I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is what we. Were, this is the whole podcast. This is great. Um, yeah, let let me tell you about opening. For <laughs> so we <laughs> open for him. And, uh, you know, usually, like, if you open for them, you, everyone just goes back to the hotel mm. and you just, everyone goes to sleep. And I'm, like, one of those people where it's, like, I didn't travel a lot. So anyone that meets me after the show, I'm, like, yeah, let's go fucking hang out because yeah. I don't want to go back. Yeah. Um, and I said yes. And this is why I stopped saying yes because I ended up, like, they were, like, oh, yeah, we live, like, off the road. But it was, like, fucking South Dakota. And yeah. I didn't realize off the road was, like the interstate yeah yeah so we drove like two and a half hours out of the fucking town we were at like in the woods yeah, yeah. and then we were like in like we drove like deep into the woods there was like four it was like a cul-de-sac and there was like four houses and i was like oh these people have known each other for the, their whole lives yeah, yeah and we smoked weed and i just immediately was like i am the only brown person here yeah. <laughs> i was like i need to leave and we called yeah. an uber the uber driver was like 30 minutes out and they drove and they're like the only reason i didn't cancel is because I needed to know where the fuck I was. Yeah. She was like, I want to let Why you know you I've lived here? here my whole life. Yeah. I've never been here. <laughs> like, oh, shit. And Amazing. those are probably Shore fans. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Specifically in South Dakota. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my Pauly Shore story is we were on tour still, the, I guess this era from like 2007 to 2009 was like, we're playing enough shows where more people are coming out, still not as popular as we are now, but like more people were coming out, which just meant more weirdos, you know, like less normal people, just the next level up of more weirdos came. So anyway, we were on tour in 2009 and, um, someone else we were on tour with, I don't remember what band it was, like went to a Hooters that day. We were just off. And like, yeah, these these Hooter, Hooters girls uh, uh, recognized us and want to hang out. So they're going to come here later. And they came at like a reasonable, like late afternoon time. It, it, we're off on tour and all three of the bands are parked in a, a hotel parking lot. And we're just hanging in the parking lot. Like the, everyone on the tour is really getting along. We were like halfway through, like we were really having a good time. So I guess Polly Shore was either there on tour like the day before or something like that still in town and the hooter girls come everyone's chilling like literally just drinking and playing like beer pong or something um and one of the hooters girls was just like i think Polly shore is going to come hang out i told him we're at this hotel and he wants to hang out and everyone's like Polly shore's coming <laughs> <It's sick." laughs> so Polly Shore comes, gets out of the car with like, you know, I, I don't know if it's a security guard or somebody, but like somebody, a handler of some sort. What did he look like? Mm. Was it a big black guy? Because I know the security guard. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can't yeah, remember what yeah. his name is. But yeah, so that means, I know what year you're talking okay. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 09-ish. Yeah, yeah. uh, so, so they pop out of the car 
And Polly Shore couldn't have been more bummed that there was about 30 dudes <laughs> just like, Polly Shore is here. And then the Hooter girl literally was like, I think Polly Shore is going to come hang out. I told him we're at this hotel. So Polly Shore, I don't know Polly Shore, but if a Hooter girl is like texting you being like, I'm at this hotel, come hang out. He might have a t different <laughs> idea of what's happening. He gets out of the car and we're just like, yeah. <sighs> biodome <laughs> you know? that is uh i don't think oh, he lasted very long i think he left pretty pretty quickly after uh, that 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 is everything to me because i've <laughs> been on the other side of that story <laughs> of like going to the hotel room and polly being like hey we went to the hooters and picked up on some servers we're yeah. gonna go to a party later and then you show up and it's just a bunch of dudes <laughs> yeah. yeah i love that it's crazy the <laughs> fandom people have for Polly shore like i've gone on the road and i've seen moms mm -hmm. that are like i still want to fuck polly shore and then yeah. i've seen their daughters who are like my mom loves polly shore and played nothing but polly shore movies and now i'm in love with polly yeah, shore yeah. and i'm just like this is gross yeah. weird <laughs> this is weird but i mean i guess that's fame you know yeah. he his, he was also so it, like i've gotten to open up for a dope mm -hmm. amount of people and my parents have always been like super proud but they've never been as proud as when i opened up for paul yeah Shore. i mean he's a, at when he was popular it was like such a crazy time in like pop culture because like mtv yeah. you yeah, know yeah, like yeah. like who wasn't watching mtv back then so yeah. like that's whether however successful he really is like he was on tv when everyone watched tv that's that's so fam for like, he's famous yeah and it was crazy to hear his just to hear him talk about it because it was like for six years or four or six years he was doing that Pauly Shore, like every summer he was mm. like a VJ and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, but he talked about when, uh, like the night he realized he was famous, where it changed was mm -hmm. he was opening up for a headliner and they were just watching him like his first time on MTV and like everyone was going crazy and he was just like, oh shit. And he said the next day everything was just wild. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Dude, my my little sister, like 15 years old now, loves Pauly Shore. It's I literally so, just remember that. I so went home funny. for Christmas and like my mom was like, oh yeah, call me Shore, blah, blah. And she's like, I was like, yeah, Pauly Shore's mom owned it. And, and then, that's the blah, crazy blah. And then yeah, so yeah. she around. was just like, wait, you have you met Pauly Shore? I was like, in passing, I've said hello. And my little sister lost it. Dude, it, it was very <laughs> What weird. is she like? Got reach, like dude. old stuff, new stuff? A little like bit of everything. Well, yeah. I think that goes back to my dad, where my dad's okay. like, so when I, my mom met my stepdad, uh, he had like 600 DVDs all alphabetized and in bookcases. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So he's like, yo, here's culture. Enjoy. We're going to play these forever. I'm keeping them safe. Yeah. <laughs> dude, they were, they traveled us through multiple houses, yeah. bro. <laughs> I think they're still in the garage in boxes. My wife's, uh, I guess my father in law. I guess I'm married. God, that was such a rude Your thing father. about the nicest man in the fucking world. <laughs> Bill, uh, my father-in-law, huge Chevy Chase fan, mm. loves uh, Christmas mm -hmm. Vacation. They watch it every year. It's my dad's favorite movie. Really? Yeah. Like one of the best not movies. favorite Christmas movies. It's favorite it's, movie. It's so fucking funny. It's uh, Vegas, so many. That Ferris lines. Bueller, I would say. Ferris those Bueller's those would be tied for so him. So good. Um, uh, his daughter, uh, Chevy Chase's daughter, uh, works as a coworker of mine at the store, mm -hmm. and it was just so funny. He sh he came and like I got to meet him and stuff. But, uh, you know, I'm going to get my father-in-law an autograph from fucking Chevy Chase. And I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> my house. I'm going to get the house in the will. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it's just uh, guys like that, those old school guys, is very, very cool to see. It's so yeah. wild to see Polly Shore be, like, a dude. I never thought I'd be, this would be a guy that I'd see all that. I've seen that dude fucking take his shirt off, you know, because yeah. you're opening for him. You're like, uh, <laughs> put a tank top on. Yeah. You smell his farts. <laughs> I have, I yeah. did. God, you know, so much fun. Just the, just the, really get to see the real person. Yeah. You know? uh, uh, Nick, what's uh, what's something you do around your house? You think your dog judges you for? Um, I mean, for sure, me and my dog are like legitimately attached to the hip. Like uh, we are. Oh, what kind of dog? We are you? boys. Uh, he's like a miniature poodle mix nice. he rescued him uh when he was one and the rescue was like eh, it's a poodle terrier i'm like poodle yeah i don't know if there's any terrier in here so i had his dna done and he's just a total designer dog he's like Whoa. poodle bichon maltese shih tzu i'm yeah, like yeah. you're adorable but Oof, what's funny is like we had him sorry sorry I'll get to your question in a second <laughs> i could. love talking about my dog but uh, we had him for about a year, pandemic happens, and I've now just been two years of like, he only knows me being home basically. Yeah. So we are like, uh, is the tightest I've ever been with any dog and he's my boy and 
I love him. I, I thought I actually had a thought about texting you earlier to be like, "Can I bring my dog?" Because he would just be sitting here right Are now. You sure? Yeah, yeah. Dude, I Next turned time. into a child with dogs. I've always wanted a dog. He's the I, best, dude. He's the like, absolute angel. Just wants attention all the time. Love him. <laughs> Finn, what up? You watching? <laughs> um, I mean, the the actual answer is masturbate, right? Like, that's <laughs> <laughs> I guess I wanted to preface that me introducing finn saying that like he's just always around he's the type of dog that's just like you're going in that room i'm coming with you you know we do everything together yeah yeah so uh, he'll he'll be a little too close for comfort sometimes you know <laughs> I've, I've done that i have three cats and i've done that and then like i've finished and i've gotten up off the bed and then i've looked and all three cats are just sitting on the yeah. the, the counter just staring at me yeah. and i'm just like i feel <laughs> i feel disgusting yeah. I was like, <laughs> don't tell mom <laughs> Like, why are you on her side of the bed? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what about you, Frank? Besides masturbation, you think um, you do? Cats are just like, what the definitely fuck? Definitely waking up late. Like when I wake, because my wife goes to work at like eight ish, so sometimes I'll get up early and I'll mm -hmm. be I'll be a good productive person. But other times you're, cause, you know, I only work at night now, yeah. so like I'll sleep into like ten or eleven, and then like the cats will just be like screaming. At yeah, me. they're just like, what are you doing? Or sometimes they'll sleep with me until like noon and then it's nice yeah turn into such a cat dude it's i want to be <laughs> a dog guy so bad well i didn't think i'd love cats bro but my girl has like a nine-year-old cat that mm -hmm. like in the last two years like will not leave me alone and like, I, I love him but yeah. he just like attached i love his dog mm -hmm. his dog loves me too. yeah got a big old i feel like in dog. the last 10 years i've met more cool cats than ever in my life and uh -huh. i'm like in my head i'm like did you guys all talk or something yeah. and like figure yeah. like you're losing the war to dogs. It's hard time. You know? <laughs> like, we got to start giving a shit, guys. Yeah, <laughs> this last one? The last dab? Final round, dog. Hell yeah. This one actually is one I saved for last because it, it was honestly impressive to me. Uh, it's not that they're not all impressive, but it's one I guess smoked and I, I don't think I've smoked anything quite like it in, in the past. Um, it's called Poochie Juice. Um, I'm not familiar with the strain Poochie. Um, this is my first experience with it. Um, it's it's Poochie crossed with GMO. Uh, you get that GMO kind of smell when you smell the actual jar. It has that very savory smell to it. Uh, but then as soon as you smoke it, it's like a berry candy. It's like Pez almost. Because it has like a berry almost kind of grape taste to it. But then it's like chalky. Almost like 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 the purple or blue Pez. And it gets super sweet and it keeps getting sweeter. And so that was very interesting to me because like I said, I've never heard of Poochie and usually GMO is so strong that garlic cookies that it takes over everything and all you taste is that savory flavor, but that's all all candy. Were you talking to me this whole time? Yep. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. No, that tastes amazing. <laughs> fucking Frank, dude. I'm, so I'm fucking <laughs> leaving, dude. I'm so, so high right now. <laughs> that fucking last And that one too, <laughs> that one I literally took a dab uh, before I got over here and I was I was impressed with like how stoned I was and I think it was the GMO in there, uh, but really kind of kicks, kicks the like euphoric off rip. It's very, very nice. Very tasty. Um, so are you big? Uh, who, who, who are some of your favorite comics? Like, you said, I think I messaged you, you said that you had who saw someone a lot recently. I went when I was in New York, I saw, um, I went there to see Natalie Cuomo, that was at uh, Comedy Cellar. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I've I've seen a lot of the more like bigger tours earlier in my life, you know, like the, I mean, like. Hannibal Burris, I've seen, uh, you know, like uh, that. That tour was, damn, what was the tour? I don't remember. It was oddball? definitely branded as something. It might have been Oddball. Yeah. Sarah Silverman, I've seen yeah, yeah. on that with Hannibal Burris. Yeah, I think um, that was Oddball. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, it's just uh, I've gotten definitely more into. I mean, I've always loved comedy. I grew up on Saturday Night Live and stuff like that. Like that was just yeah, especially being I from always, New York. Yeah, yeah, like I just loved staying up late on saturdays which turned into me wanting to stay up to watch conan every you know all week and um that's definitely all my brand of comedy so i don't know like lately i, I tried so hard to get uh tickets to see tim robinson at the netflix thing yeah. he's playing like the hollywood forever cemetery which i'm pretty sure the capacity of like where he was playing was like five people you know i'm like come on <laughs> yeah whatever <laughs> um but yeah no i love it it's something i, I definitely need to like get out and support more um i just watched the um melissa villa senior uh netflix yeah. uh, special that was awesome um so yeah i mean I'm, I'm definitely uh i i definitely have always enjoyed comedy and it's just something that like stand up i guess now especially it's like 
you keep saying stand up and music is the same it becomes so ov overwhelming that people have like tour dates and then uh specials online mm. and stuff and i'm like i'm falling behind i'm like five behind and that's and not then, even the local yeah, yeah yeah exactly so um so yeah i'm i'm trying harder i'm yeah. trying to it's in a weird way i'm like trying to be more diligent about like staying up on tv shows and music and and all this stuff i'm like there's so much out there and like i'm trying to find a good balance of like consuming that all and having it um like kind of stay with me because i can consume a million things and if none of it is like yeah st sticks with me then what's the point you know exactly. so i'm like i'm trying to spend and figure out what the sweet spot is of like consuming a bunch of stuff that i could give time to and just take it all in so Maybe I'll start doing drugs and stay up for 24 hours a day. And <laughs> it's yeah. the only way I can do more, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do a bunch of edibles and start uh, watching a lot more stuff. Yeah, <laughs> Melissa Villasenor came up at the comedy store, actually. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, the New York comedy scene, I've always loved. I was there for like one year for a festival, and mm -hmm. it was like, I, I went to every club I could. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, the cellar's beautiful. Uh, just Caroline's is dope. Been yeah. to Caroline's a couple times. Who did I see there? I feel like I've seen I'm mean, different time obviously. I've seen Louis C.K. there probably. Um Oh, I gotta Yeah. I love Lou. Lou is yeah, one of my yeah. favorites. I've seen obviously. him a bunch. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, it's funny that you bring that up because I actually have a great story that actually is yeah. a little bit kinda like yours. Uh <laughs> you know, so working at the store, um I used to, you know, you work at the store, you get to meet everybody, mm -hmm. blah blah blah. Uh Louis popped in and um uh, I won like my first T V thing and it was a big deal. To me and all you know all this bullshit um but his friend was on the same season i was mm -hmm. so i knew he watched it and he was there for the first season so he, like i you know and he helped write and stuff so i had always like wanted to talk to him about yeah. it, you know what i mean and be like hey you know like you like this thing you know mm -hmm. I, I won this thing blah, blah blah and that was like that was gonna what i thought would be my end to have like a dope conversation yeah yeah and we'd talked a few times because working there, I had to like work his green room. Mm -hmm. So I'd see him and stuff and I'd have like small conversations like, I love Louie, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And um, so he pops in, has a great set. He walks out and he sees Tony Hinchcliffe, who was also on the show. And they start talking about Roast Battle. <laughs> he was like, I saw you on Roast Battle. I loved it. You were so funny. You had great jokes. And I was like, this is my moment to yeah. fucking talk to him. And I was like, hey, man, I actually won season two of Roast Battle. Mm -hmm. And he looks at me and he goes, oh, thanks, dude. And then like nice. walks away, <laughs> and then I was like, "Huh!" And all like everyone there knew what I was trying to do, and they just let me fucking drown. And it was he. What I figured out is he misheard me. Yeah, I mean, he thought I was complimenting on on like the show we just came out. Yeah, with. yeah, yeah. And he was just like, "Thank you." And then uh, Tony goes, "Hey man, don't worry. He'll be back around tomorrow or something. Like you'll be able to talk to him again." <laughs> the next day, all the shit came. Yeah, out. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I never was like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was very, very fucking ridiculous. So, anyways. Um, anything you want to plug before we get out of here? Um, if you like Star Wars, thank the makers, the Star Wars podcast. Um, Legal Speed Coffee Roasters. That's what Chris, uh, the drummer of Bayside, and I do. Um, my real passion project, like I said, I mean, I love finding music. So I have a radio show on Spotify. It's called the radio radio show. And, uh, it's just me. It's, it's not like I try to, it's obviously in the podcast section of Spotify, but I try to not make it a podcast. I try to make it sound in a way, my own take on an hour of radio, more yeah. like a co college radio type of thing. Oh, like dude, I love in radio. 45 minutes or 50 minute episodes, I talk maybe seven of the minutes. I pick 10 songs like stuff that is like uh current mostly and new that i know that like people who like my band should like you know Ooh, like just try to get I'll them to expand out. their horizons it's all like alternative music based which is a wide umbrella um but uh i have fun doing it you know like that's for sure my project of like everything that i'm doing i'm like i really want this one to have like some sort of impact because i enjoy doing it and I just want to like be able to create a community around like music discovery and getting these people who just found out about a band to buy a ticket to a show and then they buy a t-shirt, you know, that sort of thing. So I'm just trying to do my part to help bands. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man, dude. I really appreciate it. Cool. Dude, thank you so much. Of course. Uh, all right. Thank you, JP. Uh, thank you, thank you, Third Wheel. Thank you, Puffco. Thank you, Sumo Snacks. Thank you, Punch Extracts and Edibles. 